In this episode, I'll show you how to generate the project using Spring Initializer and how to upload it into your IDE. Let's get started. First, I go to the Spring Initializer website and change a few defaults. I favor Kotlin over Java, and with Kotlin, I like to use Gradle as a build tool and dependency manager. I'll leave Spring Boot with the latest stable version. And when it comes to Java Platform, I'll stick to Java 11. But notice that I could have also used Java 17, which is the newest version of Java that enjoys the long-term support. Go with this option if you can, but I assume that most of you watching this video routinely work with Java 11. So moving on to the dependencies, obviously I want to add Spring Security. And then my next choice is Spring Web, a more Spring Reactive Web. The reason why I don't just choose the Spring Web is simple. I want my application to scale well and acquire less resources under high load. With Spring Web, I would get the traditional blocking web API. Reactive Web, on the other hand, gives me an advantage of a fully asynchronous, non-blocking I.O. If you want to know more about the design choices in this tutorial, watch the introductory video. I've pasted a link down below and it's also linked at the end of this episode. The last component I want to add is a template engine. Timeleaf is a popular choice and works well with Spring. It allows me to generate HTML output on the server side. So I've downloaded the generated Gradle project and I'm about to import it into the IDE. The IDE of my choice is IntelliJ IDEA. While I use a paid version for commercial development, in this tutorial I'll stick to the community edition that's available entirely for free. I even consider it a good habit not to depend on specific features of your IDE. Your project should be easily transferable and it should be easy to get it up and running without having to rely on proprietary features. If there is one thing you will miss with the free version of IntelliJ is the built-in HTTP client, but it's nothing to worry about in this tutorial. Now, in IntelliJ to import the project, I go to File, New, Project from Existing Sources, and I simply go to the project directory and choose the Gradle config file. Next, I confirm I trust the project and let the IDE do the rest. Okay, I have successfully imported and built the project. Let me find the main class and run it. Things are getting interesting. First of all, notice this message about generated security password. Uh, you know, why is it there and uh, where is this coming from? Well, it turns out that just by, by virtue of me having included Spring Security as a, as a dependency, I have implicitly created a test account with the username user and the random password, which is the one you can see here. So let me just copy it. And if I go to the browser, I'm redirected to the login page. Let me just log in, user, paste the copied password, and I'm in. I've restarted the app, and now I'm back in the browser. Uh, if I try to go to the index page, I will get redirected to the login page. So this is the first takeaway with Spring Security and how it functions by default. So by default, all the routes in the application are protected or hidden behind the login page. So this is the first thing to note. The other thing is that this login page, it ships with Spring. I have not created it. It looks good, but in reality, you would always want to replace it with your own because 
just to get a better control. And also this one does not have all the blows and whistles. It does not have, for instance, you know, integration with Google, Facebook. It does not allow you to reset a forgotten password, etc. So I'll show you how to replace this page in the next episodes, but for now it's good enough. Uh, and last thing to note is, you know, this random password, it changes every single time I restart the app, you get a new password. So obviously this is only good for debugging, you know, it, it's meant to get you started quickly. But again, you do not want to use the default user account. So in the next uh, few minutes, I'll show you how to change all this. Before I move on, let me quickly fix one last thing. So if I sign in with the generated password again, I hit this error page. In fact, it's not an error, it's just uh, 404. So page not found, meaning there is, no, there is no landing page in my application. So let me just fix that. In order to create a landing page, I go to resources. There I create a directory called templates. And in it, I add an HTML, an HTML5 file called index.html where I've simply added uh, our world message. Then I have restarted the application and here's my new generated password. So let me just copy that. Back in the browser, I'll log in. There, there I go. And hang on, the landing page should actually display information about the locked in user. So that's why I've added uh, Spring Security Extras from Timely um, Templating Engine. So just by adding this namespace, I gained access to certain tags. Uh, one of them is called authentication. Whenever I successfully uh, authenticate uh, towards Spring, uh, it, it will create a so-called principal object that represents the locked in user. And I'm able to access properties of this object. Uh, in this case, I'm just the username. So I've restarted the app, copied the generated password again, back in the browser, There I go, locked in as user, user. While this works and with the default configuration, I'm able to display details of the locked in user. It's rather annoying that with every single restart of the app, I need to remember to copy the generated password like this. So, let me show you how to get rid of it and replace it with uh, your own custom configuration. So to customize the Spring security configuration, uh, we need to add a new class. I like to call it security config. And the first thing um, I've done is I've added this enable web flux security annotation. So let me just drill down see what's in there. Essentially it's a main configuration class. Uh, the documentation is pretty self-explanatory. I recommend you to go through it in your own time. And what I've done is I've basically created or copied this default configuration. So back in my, my class I've simplified it to the bare minimum. So basically, you know, HTTP is the main configuration object. I can decide like, which routes to protect. Uh, I could have exceptions. There could be some routes I would not want to 
uh, be subject to authentication but for now I just say all application routes should be authenticated should require authentication by default and that's it so back to the browser if I go refresh the page this is what I get this weird pop-up it's not that weird, weird uh, in fact it's um, instead of the login form now I'm I'm presented with this pop-up which is basic authentication um, and I'm getting that because in uh, in my configuration I never said I wanted a login form so since I am explicit with the configuration Spring no longer does things by default for me so I'm in charge, I have to specify every single bit of how the configuration should look like. I have made a slight adjustment to my security configuration here and I've explicitly stated that I do wish to use a form login authentication. But more importantly, I've also added this snippet. Again, it comes from the uh, documentation. Uh, it's essentially an alternative to the generated uh, user and password uh, mechanism. So rather, rather than having to copy a generated password every single time I start the app, I've explicitly created a single uh, Test user account with uh, hard coded credentials. Um, note this method here is deprecated, it's worthwhile checking. Alright, so it doesn't mean it's obsolete, it only means it's not uh, recommended to be used in production, which makes a lot of sense. That's great. So, yet again, I've restarted the app. There's no longer a message about uh, generated user password that's gone. So, back in the browser, if I log in with the default credentials, username, user, password, password, I'm in. This brings me to the end of what I wanted to show you today. I hope you have followed along and enjoyed this brief introduction into the basic setup. In my next video, I'll show you how to add more information to the user object. Right now, it's stripped down to a bare minimum. If I click through this user details, I'll find that it only contains username, password, and maybe a bunch of roles. But in reality, I would want to greet the locked in user with their real you know name like first name last name and maybe display their email address or do some business logic based on their email address also we definitely do not want to stick to uh, the hard-coded credentials uh, you know you would want to load user details from a database and all the sensitive information such as the password should be safely encrypted. I'll unpack on all of this in my next episode. Until then, uh, let me know your questions and thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, please like this video if you have found it useful. Hit the subscribe button and get notified whenever a new episode shows up. Thanks for watching and see you around in the next episode.